yeah. you just you're um, you know, so that's what I need to do is I need to really track more. Mm -hmm. um, and can, yeah, yeah. Tra track is yeah. Thing. It is because then you know where you're spending your time and where your money's coming from. And I always did loosely, but I could be more effective and yeah. more efficient. Would you do it like retroactively? So like you get to the end of the year and you're like, okay, here's all my deal deals. Here's the source. Like, is that what you generally do? Or so I have a spreadsheet throughout the whole year. So I'm always updating that spreadsheet. So I know you know, it's also the pipeline. So you know what you're going to pay every month. Yep. You know, yep. I run my um, business like a business. I am an LLC. I pay myself a salary. Um, so I'm, you know, I pay my taxes quarterly. So uh, yes, I'm very knowledgeable about where my leads come from. But again, mm -hmm. being new to Pittsburgh and again, networking, that's exactly why I'm here is yep. I need to become a little bit more familiar with all of the areas because I am referral based. I go everywhere i don't have an area that i contain myself to yeah and i don't want to i'm okay with that yeah yeah i think you that's know, the methods we learn are tried and true and so, where do you live <clears throat> i live in white house in south hills yeah hey dan can you hear us dan redniak i'm assuming that's you Danny b radio check <laughs> all right well let's see some more people are going to jump as we go here I'll just give it a minute. Um, yeah, it's like people joined that didn't sign up. And like, yeah. They even, I guess, well, it's from like last week. Like, uh, mm -hmm. um, I think it's not good. Hey, Darnell. Oh, God. Oh, um, I'm just going to give it another minute or two because what's happened in the past is i'll start doing something on my screen and then i won't be able to uh see that people are trying to join the zoom tonight so just give it a couple quick minutes as people pop on I was going to say, sure. uh, um, yeah. what do we want to kick it off with the video, I guess, or I guess, um, yeah, for just the intro, because there's a couple of new people. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Walking around. Hey, Darnell, can you mute yourself just so I can, uh, or I can mute it real quick. Yeah. All right. The, all right. So the last couple of weeks, what we've been working through is, it's business planning for 2022 followed by clarity. And so on the screen, you can see John Kitchens. He was the person who we were working through the, the video model uh, about like the clarity report, how you're going to plan your year. And we, Tim and I, just the group asking people who have joined us, we're talking about it further. And like, it's difficult, I think, to not have an actionable takeaway where it's like, that was great. And now what do I do? And I think that's like the worst part with real estate overall, where we're kind of talking about it too, where it's like, okay, well, two people just canceled on me. So now I'm all of a sudden free from one to four in the afternoon. I guess I'll just go to the grocery store. <laughs> and it's just like, I don't even have a grocery list with me because I didn't actually plan anything throughout my week. I don't even know what I need to buy at the grocery store. Yep. I'll go like it just, you just, and then you waste your time. Mm 
-hmm. And then you stay up till 1030 at night doing all the shit you're supposed to do at four o'clock in the afternoon because that person jumps back out of the woodwork two hours after you were, you know, it just, it, and how do you create predictability in the unpredictable business? Cause you can't change the fact that it's always going to be unpredictable, but you have to control what you, you are capable of controlling. So I didn't send it to everybody because I, a couple of people joined more last minute, but I'll, I'll forward it over when we're, when we're done. Um, it's, it's a document that it's a 20 something minute video with with kitchens, but we're just going to go through the concept of Sunday planning. We're like, okay, well, when do you even plan? Sunday's a good day to do it. Even if you are doing an open house or whatever, real estate wise, at least creating some sort of structure. Cause I think what you said to say too, um, it, it was just along the, time, the concept of time blocking and, and that you struggle with it. And I do too, but I think it's the same thing as going to the gym where it's like, it's better just to do a little bit sometimes then do nothing and i don't i i haven't come across something that works consistently always yeah but this is pretty good and if i actually do it it's amazing but yeah it always works it, it always does. works it but always it's, works it just sucks getting to it and, yeah, well that's <laughs> yeah, exactly yeah, it, and then it comes back to like there's a whole yeah. other aspect of like well you planned it why aren't you doing it it's yeah. like well that's yeah. a different thing we need to talk about yeah but <laughs> i mean i'm the same way so yeah. um i i don't know if you had anything to um, I mean, I've played with this in the past and I think this is something where, again, like we all know we need to do it. Why don't we do it? Maybe that's a topic for another day. Right. But um, I think at a minimum, at least even if you don't go through this whole exercise um, every single week, like some semblance of it is what I would always aim for every Sunday. Um, even if it was a tough Steelers loss and I still had to get past that, um, at least having an idea for the week. Like I would always schedule my calendar like flex time. So I would know that, okay, I have this appointment, you know, or two appointments in the afternoon. If that doesn't happen, here's what I'm going to do instead. And John hits on that a little bit. Yeah. Um, but at a minimum, that's been helpful to me. I'll make me more productive, but I think you guys will enjoy uh, John's process. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, the thought is I was, we'll just play through this, obviously chime in or like type into the chat if there's a question you have, so we can come back to it. Um, and I. Let me know. I believe the sound will work. Can someone give me a thumbs up if they can hear it? Guys are doing well and I uh, wanted to take a couple minutes and walk you through yeah. the Sunday planning process that uh, I almost get can, someone give us a virtual. Can you guys hear? I hope oh, we got a chat bubble. Audio is great. Thank you. Dan. Thanks, Dan. I have used consistently for I think right at this is probably our fourth year of going into using this simple process, but the, the process has really exponentially uh, uh, increased my pro this guy, yeah. productivity, allowing you know me to do more, as well as those that have, have adopted this process. Just just their, their productivity has has shot through the roof, uh, not only in their business but but in their life as well. And just one one thing that I wanted to really point out. This is called the Sunday Planning 168. And the 168 is the number of hours that that you and I, everybody has every week to to get the most out of life um, during that amount of time. The real formula is backing out sleep and the other the other maintenance, taking care of ourselves, and it's going to leave a ballpark number of 100. So really, that's kind of the number that we have to work with to to really maximize our our, our lives and our business. So. The reason that it's Sunday planning 168 is because it's something that you have to do every week. And the reason is, is that every week is different. So, you know, you could be in a training, you could be, you know, spending time with family, just every week is different. So part of the process is to, is to get a look at it. And I'm going to, you know, walk you, walk you all through this, this process, but I just want you to keep that in mind that every week's different, you know, we're going to work more, work less. And so just really embracing this whole, this whole concept, this whole process. So here we go. All right. So Sunday planning 168, um, a couple things to kind of be, be mindful of. We throw out, you know, MVP, HLA, HLVA, non-negotiables, and these can all be referenced right here. MVPs are our most valuable priorities. HLAs are our high leveraged activities, HLVAs high lifetime value activities, non-negotiables 
are the activities that are a must, right? These are always in the calendar, date night, working out, time with kiddos, et cetera. And a lot of those non-negotiables that you'll see there also um, fall into our high lifetime value activities. I like to reference um, Hal Elrod's The Miracle Morning, where he has his um, savers. So the silence, the affirmation, visualization, exercise, reading, scribing, uh, spending time, deepening of relationships, those non-negotiables, those are all high lifetime value activities. Our high leveraged activities are the handful of things that increase our productivity that gets us the results that we're after. Now, remember, all productivity is, is getting the results we want. If you're not getting the results you want, you are not being productive. You are being busy. So there is a difference. So HLA are the, the key drivers that really get us those results. In real estate, it's, it's only a handful, right? It's lead generation, branding, marketing activities. It's then lead conversion activities. It is pitching your offer to buyers, sellers, or real estate agents, delivering your value, you know, what is my value proposition, getting them presentation negotiating deals and if you're still working with some buyers showing properties so there's really only about four or five things that really matter in the real estate game that are considered our hlas and the mvps are obviously our most valuable priorities we'll talk about that in just a second and i'm going to give you another little math equation remember all all businesses is just it's just math and so the equation for to maximize our productivity and how much time we should be allocating on our HLAs, the number is 70% of your working time. So if you are gonna work 50 hours this week, then 70%, 35 hours, better be dedicated to those five activities. So just a little simple math equation there for you to check, a little check and balance in your calendar. So here's part one of the Sunday Sunday process that uh, we go through. And, and it starts off with acknowledging and reviewing the, the past week. You're looking for the things that went really well. What were some great accomplishments that we had for, for this past week? What were those daily wins? What did we accomplish? What, what are we proud of? And it's really, really important to take the time and acknowledge this, especially since uh, most of most of folks that are that are really you know going to embrace this process that are high driving D personalities entrepreneurs that want to get more out of what they're doing tend to just keep keep looking forward and not acknowledging the things that they've that they they've accomplished and where this really reinforces our belief is when things get real tough and you know when things get tough about every day and life is everything in life worth pursuing is uphill and the only way we get uphill is by being intentional and when we feel like that boulder is is coming down on us and pushing us back down the hill we have to really look at how far we've come and really anchor in those wins because truth truthful every one of you are winning every day and so take the time and acknowledge acknowledge those accomplishments second is lessons learned right if we're if we're moving forward we're failing and we're learning what were the lessons that we learned from our failures this past week in business and life in our leadership abilities you know in our communication in our effort what were those lessons learned how can we correct those and make those adjustments to the upcoming 168 for us to you know get get a little bit better this week so those are the first two two steps then move into the the sunday planning document so this is the document the layout that i have followed it's obviously <laughs> added a few things here and there but up in the top left is our bhag measurables we all have a bhag if not we better you better get one the bhag is your big hairy audacious goal and what are the measurables around that big hairy audacious goal Ideally, BHAGs are about 10 years out. It's the top of the mountain, it's the pinnacle. And so what are those measurables? Now, keep in mind, anything that is a measurable is a number, okay? So what is that number that we have 
to know when we when we attack and we hit our our B hack. And it can be it could be anything. It could be a financial target, it could be a profit target, it could be a number of a uh, headcount target. Whatever your B hack is, what are those measurables? Then the other thing that we want to keep keep in focus is our one year key measurables. So again, what are those? Wh where do we need to be in the next twelve months? That's going to make sure we're progressing towards our B hack. So what are those measurables around your one year? Then I like to have, what are the rewards? What's the reward when we hit those measurables? Is it, you know, a vacation that a destination vacation that you're wanting? Is it um, a timepiece that you're wanting? Is it a, a second home, right? Whatever it is for you, make sure you have that. You don't want to lose sight of it. It's just like having our vision board. If we're always looking at it, our brain goes into problem solving mode to figure out how we're going to make it happen. So get, get those measurables up there. We're looking at them every day, every week in our Sunday planning process, obviously get your dates in there. And then I like to have a couple key phrases. So find whatever key phrases work for you. A couple of mine right there. Don't get comfortable. Uh, be the most disciplined, be the most consistent, focus on the process, not the outcome, whatever, whatever key phrases, things, little reminders to keep us on track that work for you, put, put those there. Um, I added over here a favorite quote. So it tends, I, I don't know if you guys are, you know, uh, like, like this, but I tend to gravitate around favorite quotes every so often. And I see something that really, really drives me and, 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 you know, helps motivate me during the hard times. And so whatever that favorite quote for you is, um, it, it, it's really powerful to have that to where you're, where you're always looking at it. The quote that's really resonating with you at the time. And, you know, for me, I've shared this with a lot of you as, um, Garrett, Garrett White's quote, if the King doesn't rise, the queen and kingdom dies. So that's my favorite quote right now. That's the one that resonates with me the most to be, to be better each and every day. Um, now we move into, a refocus of what our big four goals for this quarter, for the quarter that you're in. Those in in four, like, geez, John, that's a that's a bunch. Yeah, I get it. The first three are typically around my business. Okay, so no more than three. Sometimes it's less. But, and I would strongly encourage you to not have any more than, than that. And those are. So with that real quick, where's everybody at? Um, can you all still hear me? Uh, don't, don't feel afraid to be on video. We're all here in person. It's just strange talking to a black screen sometimes. <laughs> um the the thing so like john i mean it's it's 10 minutes and then there's 10 minutes to finish just the, what i've been writing though throughout this is all this is great but like what does it actually mean so he he just said big goal one two three four okay i'm gonna work out today realistically that takes two hours if i'm there for an hour at the gym because by the time i get all my stuff together and get actually physically there that's 30 minutes after I do the hour and physically come home and putz around on my phone, it's another 30 minutes. So what I've struggled with is like, I'm going to exercise for an hour. It's like, well, that means it's two hours. Well, but no, you're exercising for an hour, but then not actually planning in the fact that it takes me two hours to exercise. And not always, but the, the quick overview, and I don't know if anyone has a notebook in front of them because I, again, can't see any of you, but the idea of being with real estate prospecting, appointments, follow-up and negotiation. If you have 35 hours, you're working 50 hours a week and you exercise and eat food and shower, that's your entire day. 8 to 10 a.m. doing calls, 4 to 7 p.m. doing appointments, 12 to 1, 4 to 5, respond and tell another agent, we can talk from 4 to 5. That's when I'm available. You know that when you wake up in the morning, that when Mr. Buyer and seller are like, when are we going to talk today? You can tell them somewhere between 4 and 7 p.m. because you already know your calendar. And, and if you aren't the student of your calendar, none of this works. So like the big goal, it doesn't have to be anything more than like call five people between 8 and 10 a.m. Because if you actually do that every day, 
you'll make a lot of money in real estate. Here, I'll, I'll hit on something that, yeah. that too. For, for, I think a big part of it is the expectations you set. So like when I go on a listing appointment, I will tell uh, the prospective client, like, hey, between eight and 11, I'm on the phone. I'm trying to find a buyer for your house. I'm calling other sellers in the area. Um, that's an appointment that I set with myself. Um, and this isn't maybe my exact verbiage every time, but at least I set the expectation ahead of time so that they know like, Hey, if I need to get a hold of Tim, I'm going to at least wait till 11 because that's otherwise he's not going to answer my call and at least get that ahead of time so that they know it's coming as opposed to, and Tim kind of blows me off between the hours of eight and 11. It's, it's very different. So I think that's all an expectation management. Right. Doctor's offices do that. And you should too. <laughs> because it's just like no dr smith you don't you'll never get him on the phone ever right it's just like you'll that's it you, you, and so in the the last piece of that too is what you guys were making me think about as well like i think the reason for me time blocking didn't work initially so what i wrote down was it's because i was trying to do the same things the things i should be doing every week without actually sitting in some capacity for literally any amount of time 10 minutes and just being like i don't have time this week to do this thing and never updating it. And then I feel guilty because well, I didn't call anyone from eight to 10 because I, I didn't actually plan when I was going to go grocery shopping. You know, it's just like, when do I eat? You know, it's just like, just some sort of rough draft idea. And then you feel the guilt where it's like the things I should be doing, but not actually planning or updating that. It, it I think leads to the opposite. It's just like, you, you feel worse about yourself because you're like, oh, I should have exercised. It's like, yeah, well, like you should have done a lot of stuff, but did you actually even try to, to plan it? So, you know, there's <clears throat> one quote that I like a lot. And again, even when I sit and don't do what I need to do, I always say over and over again, discipline is freedom. Yeah. And uh, exactly. yeah, 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 that's exactly it. And um, it's so, so true. Yeah. I think for me, I'm not a morning person. Yeah. So I sometimes feel guilty. All these people who got to you know, six or, I'm you know, an exercise person. and then like I'm a night person. I'd rather be working till eight, nine o'clock. My husband doesn't like it, but you know, that's when my mind yeah. is the best. That's when I'm verbally um, at my best, you know, so don't feel bad. Also, if your time isn't what everybody else's time is, that's you know, good, yeah, it's the, yeah. it's the customer service industry very much. Like I've used that. My sister's a teacher and, and I was just going back and forth with her over Christmas where she's like, I would hate your job. And it's like, I don't think you would. It's like, I would hate talking to a classroom of children, but like, I like doing this. This is basically like a classroom. And it's just this truth where it's like, yeah, well, the restaurant industry is busy between six and nine and not between nine and 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. There's, they're actually not even open. And like, when does your real estate office open? Like, if it doesn't open, if you work 11 to seven, do it. You know what I mean? Like, actually, like, don't answer your phone to 11, go hit golf balls what do you, what do you want to do with your life? And like, that's the last piece, what I wrote where just the reward aspect of it, which he's covered briefly, but I think it's like, if you do all your, we did a good job with this throughout the fall. We're like, I've actually done everything I need to do today. Do you want to go golfing tomorrow? Yeah. And it's like, yeah, it's like every other Friday, I know I'm going to go golfing with Tim and like two other, three other people. And then you actually, it's like you get ready for vacation where you, you're the most productive. You hurry up and get it all done because you're looking forward to the fun thing. Um, yeah, Dan, I do have the PDFs. I'll send it to you all after this. Um, last 10 minutes of the video, and then we can talk through just the final piece. You guys like this video? Is it helpful at all? Yes, it's Maybe. super helpful. <laughs> Thanks, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the big. <laughs> Say it one more time, Dan. This is exactly what I needed right now. Yeah, well, I appreciate you saying that because I, I feel the same way. We all need it, man. <laughs> yeah, selfishly, that's why I want to work on this sort of stuff so much. Well, the yeah. new year, like the you new look back yeah. and you say, I did so well, how did I do it? And how do I emulate it for the new year? Exactly. And that's what's stressful. Like, that right. is why we need it because we're all so stressed yeah. about Yeah, don't know, I'll send it over to you guys. Yes. Yes. You could grow it even more. All right, last 10 minutes and we can talk a little bit through the details. Goals around your business. What are, what are you committed to? to this quarter to accomplish that's um you know in alignment to where you want to be in 12 months and that's also in alignment to that big hairy audacious goal that you're after so whatever whatever those goals are now i pull those from our strategic plan so if you're not using a strategic plan 
hit me up. I'll, I'll give you kind of a walkthrough of our one, you know, one page strategic plan, our planning process to help you get clear on what those rocks are, those priorities, those goals. And I don't rewrite the entire goal here every week. I write down the key tactical items that we need to be making progress on to move us closer to those goals. And you heard me just say we, because there is nothing in this life you're going to accomplish by yourself. It takes a team. It takes who's around you. So every one of my goals has a who associated with it. And that who could be a new team member. It could also be a mentor. It could be a coach. It could be, you know, um, a training program that you're that you're going through. But there is a who associated to every goal. This was a big, big get for me. And it took a while to get there to have that connection. The other, the other connection is that it helps me determine what I'm going to consume, what I'm going to be reading. There's, it's, it's really important that we're consuming information that is going to help us accomplish the things that we want to accomplish. And so if you're like real tight on time for, for, for reading, uh, you know, I love audible. I, I, it's really hard for me to sit down and actually read, but, Audible is always on. And, and so it, with podcasts now in Audible, you can, if you want to, you know, consume your, all of your content through the Audible app, it's a fantastic way to do that. But what I would recommend is that what you're consuming is helping you accomplish the goals that you have for this given time of your life. Now, big goal number four. For me, big goal number four is always something big that project that I'm, that's consuming a lot of my time and energy and effort. Big goal number four for me right now is, is focused on endurance training and endurance events. It could also, it could be, it could be a remodel project. It could be a rehab project, right? It could be whatever, whatever is, is a big goal for you though. That's what I use big goal number four. So goals one, two, three align to my business. Big goal number four aligns to the, um, the big, physical for me, you know, something big that I'm focused on outside of my business. So those are the big goal number fours. Down at the bottom, I, I want to, I'm going to hit the MVPs first. The MVPs are the three most valuable things that I have to make sure we make progress on this week. What are those three things? And they get pulled from what's above out of the big four goals. What are the three most important things that no matter what have to get done in this next 168 for us to continue to make progress for this quarter, for this year, and moving us closer to our BHAG? So what are those three things? Then over here on the left, at the bottom left, are our got a minutes. This is really, really critical. Got a minutes are anything that you know that need to get done that really don't warrant um, enough time to put them into the calendar. Where the got a minutes are extremely powerful, they help us fight off the force of distraction. The force of distraction is real. Now, let's go back to our 168 equation. Okay. We know we, we say, hey, we got about 100 hours. Statistically, distractions take 20 to 30 hours of our week every week. So if that is true, what are you doing to fight off that force of distraction? For me, it's being crystal clear on my got a minutes. So, you know, 70% of my time working is, is working with, with clients. And so when a client needs to reschedule or a client needs to shift or they're running a little bit late, I have a couple options. I'm going to, I'm going to accommodate. We're going to, we're going to adjust. And I have a couple options. I can go down the distraction rabbit hole, which for most of us is social media, or I can look at my got a minutes and take action on those items. So for me, that's the best way that I have found to fight off the force of distraction and not go down the rabbit holes is to be clear on my got a minutes. And as soon as I catch a little break in the calendar, I go right to those. So for you, if you guys, a client cancels or a client's running late, if you know you've got something to go to that you can just start knocking out, then that's where you'll want to go. You want to tap in right into your got a minutes. So this is really key. Now, 
here's where we're going to, we, we do this work, right? It helps us gain more clarity on, on the upcoming week. And then where the rubber meets the road, right? None of this will matter if you don't do this next step. The next step is getting these items into your calendar. So we want to review and set our calendar for the week. We want to make the most of our 168. Now, right things, right order. HLVAs add it in first. Your high leveraged, uh, your high lifetime value activities are added in first. And this is where a lot of people mess up. Most people mess up, they put their work activities in first. That's wrong. That's not the right things in right order. The right thing that goes in is the high lifetime value activity first. Get those in the calendar. Now, next step is putting our non-negotiables in, okay? Non-negotiables, whatever those are for you, get those in the calendar. Next, your high lifetime uh, activities, okay? Your HLAs, high leverage activities go in next. Yeah. So real estate, it's our, like you know, if we're not showing properties, leverage, right? Not you know, negotiating yeah. deals, we're not on appointments, then, you know, 70% of our working time is going to be around lead gen, lead conversion, More building brand, right? Those things are going to go in. It doesn't matter. It, whatever, whatever your allocation of time based upon where you're at in your business, those HLAs go in next. Then the MVPs from our Sunday planning worksheet, the MVPs, your three MVPs get added in. I Ideally, I love if I can get 90 minutes around each one of those. Sometimes they don't take that long, but you know, sometimes 60 minutes, sometimes 30 minutes, depending upon what they are, try to allocate a, that amount of time to get those, to get those added in. Um, workout schedule is, is, is in knowing you don't want to, you know, show up to the gym trying to figure out what you're going to do. Go ahead and take the time during this, this planning process to get those allocated and added into the calendar meal schedule. This is another, this is another really big deal. We have, um, and I'll actually, I think I can just show you guys. So let me do this real quick. So for, for us, we have this little, um, we have this little dry erase board and with the dry erase board, with the dry erase board, we go through, it has every day and we lay out, we lay out the meals. We, we lay out our meal. Um, what we're going to do for, um, meals for, for the week. Um, we don't have to guess. We take the time based upon the calendar, when we're available, what we're going to be doing, kind of the flight plan of, of the whole family's life. And we take that time and we lay out what, what the meal is going to be. The next thing that we do is that we go through and we identify what do we need for those meals for the week. So then we make the grocery list. Uh, we used, we use Microsoft. We used to use wonder list. We use Microsoft, um, the, the Microsoft to do, and we just have, we just have a list in there for groceries and it gets added. The next, once the grocery list is put together, we, we have Kroger, Kroger here. So we, we do a Kroger click list and either, uh, you know, dropping, dropping kiddos off at school and, and running over there and picking it up. We just do it when it's, when we're going to be going by, it's convenient and when we need to do it. So meal schedule is, is taken, taken care of. It's in there. We don't have to think about it. You're not going to get that text at four or four o'clock saying, Hey, what are we doing for dinner tonight? So take the time, lay that out, take the time, lay out your kid's schedule. You know what they've got going on or, you know, um, so, so important to, to go ahead and think through that and make sure that everything adjusts and aligns within the calendar. And then the last step, and I'll give you the example of it just in a second here is taking the time to lay out and know, the social media content and strategy and things that you need to do for, for the week. If you don't have time on Sunday, uh, try to try to allocate some time early Monday to lay it out, at least have Monday laid out. However, just get seven days of that content and I'll show you here in just a second what uh, good little process that can work for you. So here's the example, kind of a calendar example uh, of a week. And I just kind of laid out based upon for, for me where, where I'm at right now, with, with my business and my life, this is kind of a real example of what my calendar looks like 
these days. So there's a little example there for you as well. All right. So the last part, and it was part of the checklist there of items, is take the time to lay out that your, your social media content. What are the pieces of content that you're going to get out during during these days during the week and just spend a little bit of time creating that content creating those pieces so you are able to um, not have to guess about it and think about it the day of and and <coughs> excuse me spend time on those platforms end up being distracted take the time be intentional with what's what's going to go and and so you can have leverage you can have some help with it but no matter what you have it laid out you know the content you know the hooks you know kind of the, the content piece the story and then what's the what's the offer what are you telling people to do at the end of that content that you're getting out there you can use tools like loomly is one of uh, i've got quite a few clients that are using loomly l-o-o-m-l-y.com loomly.com and that's a uh, it's a great great tool to to help plan out there's I know there's other ones that you can look at that you can get the content in and you know just hit the button and it'll it'll send out on those days so whatever works for you having um, you know to be able to to get that content out but at least taking the time being intentional and thinking about it is going to be really really key so that's it guys that's the that's the Sunday planning guide that's Sunday planning process John is a yeah. He is a sensei. He's a wizard. Good stuff. Um. So the um. Just a couple of things where the piece for, with the last piece of social media strategy. Uh, what I was saying to everyone else here too is just like it can be for open houses. It can be for. It doesn't have to be. It can be for this in the sense that like I know that I have to send out invitations to this by about Tuesday. Otherwise, no one's going to come the same way with your open house where like no one's going to come if they just hear about it like that morning and if you don't have a strategy the entire purpose of this and like i've spoken with john about this quite a few times we're like we actually coach with this guy relatively often right and it, it's the i don't know if you've heard like the, the bruce lee thing mind like water where it's not about being flexible but it's about being able to resp respond appropriately to the input where if you throw a pebble it's just gonna only ripple if you throw a boulder it'll be much larger and then settle about as appropriately as fast because if you don't like i have adhd i'm very distractible if you don't know what you're doing for dinner in just some capacity you're not going to eat until 8 30 at night you're going to feel like hell and you didn't even exercise today because you fucking forgot <laughs> like it's just it's never going to work so i mean dan and darnell you guys send the group i will forward this over to you guys I sent it to. Uh, thank you. The everything, what we're going to try to I think to mostly do moving forward too. Everything that we're going to try to talk about is going to be either on YouTube or like follow John. I mean, there's there's 150 thousand hours worth of this stuff. But I mean, I guess the question, you know, for the last like 20 minutes or less, it's like number one: Has anyone ever actually done this? And if you have, has it worked for you? Like, what are your thoughts? Um, I'll go first yeah so i do a version of this with my wife because she has her work schedule uh, like a month in advance and so we have like a little whiteboard on our fridge she will put down like her shifts and everything in advance and then every sunday i try to do um i'm not going to say i go through this full process i'm going to start doing that um but i do like a abbreviated version of this based on her schedule that week so since she's in healthcare, it varies she could be out working on a random tuesday or thursday till 11 p.m well, those are the days I know that because it's me, her, and my dog, uh, it is okay for me to be working till 11 p.m. on this coming Tuesday, but not next Tuesday. Um, so I do a version of that, and it's, I found that helpful. And then the days that she is totally off, maybe if I get my calls done in the morning, I'll take the rest of the day off after like one or two, just because I know I'm going to make it up the next day till 11 or whatever. Right, and you can never take off in real estate if you don't plan to. That's right. the problem. Exactly. And, and then like, it's actually that's honoring what, that time. Yeah. Um, anytime I don't do that is when I feel the most anxious because I'm, I think in my head, oh, you know, what are all these things I know I need to do? 
I have a task list of all the things I need to do. I think the MVP is good. Yeah. Because it prioritizes that. And then the um, what did you call it? The other it's it's high Busy lifetime ones. value. The got a minute. Minutes, the got a minutes are, are the got a minutes too. are what will we drive saying, you insane. Yeah, we were saying that before too, where it's like, okay, one to four, everyone canceled. Well, now what do I do? Yep. Well, nothing because you didn't plan for it. Yeah. I like that <laughs> yeah. because throughout the day, there are projects that come up and I say, I can do that after five. This is not so important. I don't want to take away from work, like right. pay bills yep. or, you know, uh, so I did like that. Got a minute. And yeah. that's a phenomenal example too. We're just like the paying bills where it's like, if you don't find value in this, then stop paying all of your bills through automated pay, start paying through mailed checks and then explain to me why that's better. Because that's what everyone does in real estate. At least it's the beginning where you wake up, yeah. you're like, today's the day. And it's just like, what do I do? You don't know. Like you, you don't have a system in place where it's like, I don't want to pay my electric bill, my gas bill, my rent, everything that I have to do on a single check, write out the address. Like that is the massive waste of time. If you sit for 10 minutes and actually plan, then you'll be able to actually just live your, live your life. Yeah. And like, it's just like, if you have it's just these, a better way. If you have these windows, it's like anything you track, you track your calls, your contacts, you can go back at the end of the year and look at your progress. I mean, if you track how many calories you eat in a day, do you think you're going to eat less? I mean, probably. If you track anything, you become more conscious of it. Right. It, it's overall going to work out for you. So, I mean, our time is, is definitely no different than that. Yeah. But, you know, my husband and I, we do HelloFresh and we get it three yeah. times a week. Yeah. And so that he's way more disciplined than I. We have a shared calendar, but I really only put things on after five o'clock. Again, that's our time. But, um, yeah, it, it's so funny how he's helped me to be more of that, but I fight it all the time, you know? Yeah, it's it's hard. Yeah. I feel like it's really hard. The alignment with the significant other is so important because, yes. mm -hmm. like I said, my wife Emily has her schedule. Um, when I was when I was in the army, we had our days scheduled. You know, I knew what I was doing. Well, now I'm my own boss, so she thinks I'm sometimes neurotic, but she's like. Timmy, we don't need to, you don't need to know <laughs> every single little thing. Like you're going to schedule me to go to the bathroom. The same thing too I, with my girlfriend where it's just like, it's yeah. like, listen, I won't be able to do anything and, if yeah. I don't know where it's like, when are we getting the Christmas tree? Well, I'm like, it's like Saturday. Well, I have a listing appointment then. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. It doesn't matter if it's Tuesday. I, it doesn't matter if it's Saturday. I can do whatever I want yeah. every day. And I mean, I think it's, it's a nightmare. It's okay. It's okay <laughs> yeah. to deviate. That's why it's good. Like he has MVP jam time in his right. calendar for two and a half hours. Like there's some flex time sure. and it, even if there is a couple detours or, or fires you need to put out or whatever you want to call it, at least, you know, you still have some semblance of a plan, uh, even if it kind of gets derailed every now and then right. that you can fall back on. And maybe at the end of the day, review your day and say, OK, today didn't really work out the way I expected it to. But at least I know I'm going to go back to it tomorrow and everything's going to fall into place. So that's the way I look at it, at least. Helps me sleep at night. Yeah. But you you just nailed it too. We're like, there's a reason that the army gives you an outline of what you're going to be doing because everything will drop into chaos in that high stress environment if you don't even know when you're supposed to eat. It's very true. Right. Discipline. It's it, it just like yeah. that's that's maybe just a very like taking a step back from real estate where it's like the light turns red at McDonald's to tell them to flip the burgers so the product's the same every time. Mm -hmm. Do that. It's a process. Yeah. <laughs> it's just yeah systems and processes it's just like and, it, and you just crushed it too where it's just like if 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 you if you feel so overwhelmed you can at least go back to your thing and be like i should be calling people right now yeah but i don't feel good so i'm gonna call them less but i'm at least aware that you don't have to think about it. yeah and then, when you when you're in the like middle of it too. yeah, yeah. where yeah. it's like in that middle of a feeling is like i just did it where it's right. just like ah yeah i think the comforting thing too it's is impossible to, to, to always like i always remind myself of is like there are no emergencies in real estate i mean yeah. really like an actual emergency like a car accident or something terrible right i mean it, it, there is no real like oh the offer deadlines at five okay we'll plan the day around that and we're gonna hit that that timeline i mean right i don't know what um <clears throat> what has worked i guess I and mean, obviously anyone, Amy, I don't know if, or whoever, I'm just picking on you because you turn your camera on. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, or just, I mean, I, I can go first. Where like the thing for me that really, really helped just to start where it's like, okay, well, what do I do? My 12 to one, four to five, that's when I'm going to call you back. And then same with you said with like your sellers, where they're like, oh, okay. Like, yeah. Yeah. And I, then, you, but you know, do it. And if you miss it, then apologize. But it, it just, 
that's just the best place I think to start. And if nothing else, then like four to seven, because most people can't go see a house at 1.30 in the afternoon on a Wednesday, four to 7 p.m. Just be like, that's when I do listing and or buyer appointments. That's when I do it. Because odds are that's when it's going to be the most readily available for everybody in this world to go. Yeah. And if you just know that, then when you're on the phone with them, when you schedule your prospecting time, you can say, well, what about Thursday at four? If not, then we can do Friday at six you know that they're open yep. you know it just yep. like it makes your whole life better it just flows and uh teaching yourself and ultimately others will then begin to respect your schedule i've found at least like there there'll be like buyer clients that i work with and i know that they they'll look at the properties i send them like really late at night and they'll text me at like 10 30 and i mean am i still up yeah usually 11 11 30 but i'm not going to respond to them at 10 30 you know, giving them the impression that while I'm spending quality time with my wife, that I am going to place work as an emphasis over that time with her. Right. So I'm kind of training them to respect that window. Of, oh, Tim, Tim never responds past 9 p.m. And he never responds before 8 a.m. Right. Um, or then, in this case, 11, if we're doing my calls. That's but that's a big part of it, I've found. And then for us to personally respect our own time blocks, like I'm cold calling 8 to 11. Okay that's an appointment with myself the same way I wouldn't blow off another client. I don't want to blow myself off with missing that time block. Yeah. And that's, that's like a, um, it was a Jordan Peterson. I think it was like, it's like treat yourself as if you're somebody that you're taking care of. Yeah. It, because if you don't, you're, it's like, put your own oxygen mask on first. So you'll just be dead and that's not helpful for anybody. Yeah. <laughs> it just makes it, in fact, it's the worst thing that could happen. True. And, and with all of that too, it's, Something that's helped me very much, again, is just taking it a step back from real estate where you know what you're going to expect when you walk into a doctor's office. You know, at least in some basic capacity, what you should do when a police officer pulls you over. The framing of the uniform, the framing of the life style, where it's just like a pilot, like everyone can joke about what that sounds like over the radio because they're consistent and they have a brief flight checklist and that's why it works so well. Yeah. You know, and so treat yourself as if you are the licensed professional that you are. And, and then it will become more of that where it's like you have a medical license, obviously having a real estate license is not in the same capacity as what it takes to get that. However, you have the legal fiduciary responsibility to be the best you can at your job. Right. And if you don't have business hours, that's like, it's not a business. <laughs> it just, I mean, if nothing else, maybe just leaving it at that, you know, like what are the business hours that you at least want to work, you know, and, and, I don't know. I, I don't you know Dan or Darnell or anybody, any input you guys think, or I want to make sure we have a somewhat discussion besides us preaching. Okay. Literally every single thing you said, I felt like I stepped on a rake and again, it hit me in the face. <laughs> so like um, the first thing is like how we talked about like the HLA time, like your important time and things like that. Right now, I feel like everything that I have is the gut time. Can you guys hear me good? Yeah, yeah. My computer. Oh, yeah. Um, it's like, for example, like uh, this week, I'm working a 50 hour week. And if I have an appointment, I like leave this job, go do the appointment, come back, then log back in and finish the job. So I'm like kind of running all over the place. I mean, it's like, you know, throw the gym in first thing in the morning because no one's, uh, you know, ruining that. But the one big thing you guys brought up is like, setting that free time and setting the expectation where I, I've had literally like clients texting me information about houses. And I was like, Hey, I'm currently working on a garage. Give me a few hours. I'll be back. And as I'm like literally sawing, they're just sending you message after message after message. Yeah. They literally like, like you see me like you're obviously too busy to work with us. You know, like I've had clients like do that and you know, it kind of gave me that like really rushed, you know, feeling where, you know, I'm doing Zoom meetings while I'm working. I'm you know, texting agents during engineering meetings, you know, things like that. And I need to like tone it down and just treat it like less of an emergency. Yeah. I mean, what you just said, I think, is something that I learned too, where it's, it, it's giving the expectation and like, presence of like control here pop it onto the side oh yeah sure i got you what you do um the tech guy. well 
just so we can all see what everyone's saying. On a um, side note, if, if I could just say though, yeah, yeah. Uh, people are assholes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. and so I, it's setting that expectation. Beyond that, but beyond that, I think that that's why you want to cultivate your sphere. And if you are referred, the the respect is already there, the trust is already there. When you're dealing with people you don't know, those are the people who disrespect you the most. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So more reason to really focus on your marketing and cultivating those relationships so you can grow your business. That's so true. And and one thing uh, DJ on our team brought up yesterday during our role play call, which you guys should all be on. I'll I'll send out invites if not. Um, he mentioned, cause we were going through like a buyer script for a realtor.com lead. Unfortunately, a lot of consumers look at real estate agents and like buyers agents in particular as like a commodity, right? Yeah, yeah. So if like, you call yeah. them within 60 seconds, they're probably going to go with you. And that's why speed to lead. That's great. But Dan, to your point, you know, it's, it's just that level of respect that might not be there if it is, you know, maybe sphere or referral. It, it's, but and to that, it's it's. I just love the doctor's office example because it's what I used to do was was in that space where it's like, what do you want, WebMD or the doctor who sits down to talk with you? It's like speed or lead. Congratulations! Like go drive to Canada and see you have someone cancel on you. Like your wife's also going to cancel on you because you're never around. <laughs> you know, it's like that's not a way to live. Yeah, and it's just like you can you can do that. It it serves a purpose. But if you focus on like, okay, congratulations, like Dan, you nailed it. We're like, hey, it feels like you're too busy for us. I mean, to that, I would say either don't respond or set business hours in the sense that like, hey, right now, don't, you don't have to say like I'm working uh, in my garage maybe, but it's just like. Literally that client was, okay, it was. That person was my probably. Mom's, my mom's neighbor's boyfriend was a client. She could actually hear the saw running from her house. And she was messaging me. Okay. Well, to that, it's just like, Hey, right now I'm working. Are you able to speak at nine 30? You know, just like set that expectation. No, you're not able to, cause you're working. When's the next time you're available. I'm available between four and seven tomorrow. And then instead of giving the expectation of like, it's the opposite of a needy. We're like, listen, man, I'm fucking, I'm working. Like, what do you want? You don't call the dog. It's again, the doctor's thing where it's just like, this is the appointment times we have available or go find someone else. And I'm okay with that respectfully. Yeah. Yeah, so, I got like um I, I can't tell who's in the back there with you and Tim, but um like I don't know how long they've been in the game too. I know you got a story, but um no, like I just uh, had like uh, one buyer I've been working with. Uh, we were showing houses, and he's like, "Hey, there's this new plan down the street. Like, let's just check it." So I walked in my first time with a new builder. I've never been into a builder before. Okay. I, I registered them. And I've been sending them houses all week. Like, hey, do you guys want to take a look at this? Do you want to take a look at this? They responded this morning with, hey, why didn't you show us all these different plans and all these different builders that we could be working with when I didn't know they were really up for it until we showed up there? Whereas it's part of that, like, respect and expectations. And I don't know if anybody else has any kind of advice for that. Where it's like, hey, sorry, I'm green. I just followed that, you know? Like, I didn't know you wanted to talk to all the builders. So they, they said that, they told you why didn't you show us new construction? Like different plans. Like there's plans I don't even know about that are popping up around you know the area, and it was just kind of like a. I feel like I dropped the ball, but it was also like, hey, we don't we want a new build. They didn't say that. It was I've been scouring the MLS. Do not feel. Do not allow people to make you feel bad. I always yeah. make a joke. I I always joke like, listen, we're dating. We're getting to know each other. I'm yeah. sorry I didn't pick up on that cue. We'll true. make out later. Yeah. You know. I mean, honestly, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> it comes mine. Yeah. Well, it's just like, hey, it sounds like you're interested in new construction. I'm sorry, I wasn't aware. It feels like we should focus on that moving forward. Would you like me to set up a search for that now? Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of like what I did. It was like, well, I've already contacted several builders. I'm like. You could have just said, hey, we like this Ryan plan here. Can you get info? Yeah. Yeah, it's just expectations well, up front. It's like if they didn't communicate with you on that in the yeah. beginning, then, I mean, that's not really on you. You're not a mind reader. It's but not. Where it's like, I'm sorry, doctor. You you didn't tell me. My, it's like, you didn't say your leg hurt. Yeah. You know, it just like, I didn't know. Dan, and, I think the other thing is you, yeah. the process evolves, you know, and so maybe that's uh, something that you now have on your list of questions that you ask. Have you thought of new construction? You know, and then you kind of highlighted it. And then, because again, it evolves. People might want one thing, but they always end up with something else. Right. So that's a good point. Yeah, that's yeah. a very good point. Yeah, and I think it's kind of like, 
Sorry, yeah, I've heard a lot of them and, you know, showing them different things. But, I mean, it's like one of those, I was like, oh, okay, take it as a learning lesson, like mini failure. Like he was saying, like, oh, lesson learned. Go on with it. But, yeah. It, it comes back to, I mean, to tie it into this where it's like, it's not that you shouldn't be working with people, but it's like if you if you called 35 for sale by owners and expired listings, you would have more predictability over who your client would be, as opposed to like a buyer is the, the most unpredictable one. And it's not a wrong thing, but it's it's on average, I think DJ said the other day too, it's true. It's the an average buyer is like gonna be 26 hours of your time between driving to appointments, seeing 15 houses over the course of a year. And a seller is, I think it's like on average, like five hours, it's crazy. which you can have. And that's why you can have 50 listings and you cannot have 50 buyers and do any sort of a good job. I think the most you can have is like without losing your shit. Like I've talked to people like 20 and then you'll get like four deals a month about like actively showing houses to 20 people is, is nuts. That's a lot. And that's, well, that's what Jen Clary is doing. Well, they're all in the same house. It's not yeah. like they have a lot of inventory. Yeah, so right. That's another thing. I've shown more. Yeah. The other thing I thought was really powerful was he was talking about like look at like your accomplishments and use that going forward. Yeah. I think that's one thing that we I know I have that problem where I don't look at what I accomplished last year. I just look at like, oh wait, my pipeline's currently dry. I don't have any leads in and I've got nine you know, I call an agent on my Facebook showing like 60 listings this week. <laughs> I feel like an idiot, you know? You'll buy the hype. <laughs> yeah. Don't buy yeah. the hype. It's like, oh, you're, me. you're a multi million dollar yeah. producer. Congratulations. <laughs> That's, that should be everybody. Yeah. Harrison is the thief yeah. of joy, Dan. Yeah. yeah. It's like, the, I mean, the last, I guess, piece that you keep making me think about, Dan, is like, I struggle with that very much too. Where like the achievements, the first page, were like, that's, that's so great where, I mean, I like printing stuff out and having the physical paper because I like referring back to it. And even if you just simply write down, like make sure to ask new people about new buyer construction preferences, you'll first off remember it, you'll be able to refer back to it, you know, like in a year from now when you're doing whatever you're doing in real estate, more volume, whatever it changes, you can think, you can look back through it and be like, oh yeah, that's, you know, reflect on it. And, and I think that's how I've learned very quickly too, is to always just kind of have a, a place to put all my stuff. If it's in a calendar or if it's in a like thoughts about, you know, work or like make sure to ask like the questions I'm going to ask new buyers, like have it in your binder, carry it with you sort of thing. Yeah, that's, that's definitely all really good stuff there. I mean, plus like, uh, one thing, I mean, as a team, you know, they were just talking about like, you know, focusing on things. You got to talk about golfing on the Fridays and things like that. You know, now that I'm at the point where I've got every other Friday off, like, I definitely want to be like golf and really increase that focus. They were talking about like the uh, social media presence and things like that. Like, I know last year I didn't really do it. This year I want to like, you know, do it using like Canvas, things like that, updating our, um, our marketing. Like yeah. You mentioned there. Well, so something that I just kind of am making up, I, I made up today where it's like, take the deals you did last year. If you don't have a picture of some, like, it doesn't have to be like, I don't think a strategy is when you sell a house, take a picture with them and post it on social media. That is the basic outline of an idea. It's not a strategy. And the reason is because a bunch of other stuff has to happen before you can even do that. And so it's, it's just, it's an idea. Like, well, first you have to do a bunch of stuff to even make it work. So like, well, what about if you take all of the homes in your area that have either, that you've sold number one, or like that you'd like to sell and be like, this house sold in three days for this number versus this number. And this is why. And you take like four of those and post them over, like schedule it to post like every other week. And you just covered social media for. That app is pretty nice week. that John talked about. Or, or your past, like, and it doesn't matter how many deals you've done. If you've done a couple or like take the previous year's deals. And even if you already posted a picture of the people who bought it, just take a picture of the front of the house off the MLS and just write like the 90 to hundred words, whatever. This is what was good about this deal. This is what was difficult. This is what I did to solve it. 
you know, and then a picture of your face. We're like, nobody likes just <laughs> seriously. I'm, well, it's just like, that's why they follow yeah, you because it's, it's, it's your friends, yeah. it's your people, it, you know, and they want to know what's up with your life. And I think it's more interesting to have like, this is, this is me and holding a sign that says sold. We're like, that's great. We know you do real estate, but like, give me something that I can like, it's a story, like a blog, like a readable, interesting item about like the hard parts, you know, that I think is, that's a strategy where it's like, I'm going to share this detail and do it then. Like, I don't know if that helps, but. Any parting questions or anything so we can respect everybody's, everybody's time, which would be ironic if it went over time, considering <laughs> we're talking about <laughs> schedule. So we have 30 seconds. Yes. If not, are we, we're sending out kind of a weekly ahead of time, you know, updates of what we're going to cover. Yeah. I'm yep. building with Tim the Facebook group too, where everything we like talk about, thank you, Darnell, is going to be like, you already put it in there. We're just like having somewhere to refer back to because it's hard for me to manage the email with everything. I think Facebook is a good place for it to just live. And then you can invite people to that or share it with your team. I don't, it, I don't care, whatever you want. And it'll just be in there too. So that. Yeah, I try to find everybody on Facebook. So uh, I'll friend you and repeat well. We'll add you to the group. Yeah, and it's then a that can be kind of where we start posting stuff and add anyone you want that you think could could benefit from this so all right thanks guys thank you guys have a good week good meeting, guys. Thanks. Thanks. all right see you guys that was great